Hello, hello. So I thought I would show you how to install PFSense 2.6.0 on real hardware because uh, you know most videos on YouTube they show you how to do it on a virtual machine. You should not run PFSense on a virtual machine. I'm going to install this on uh, two SSDs and those are going to be in a mirrored setup. So yeah, I got the uh, PFSense installer on a USB st stick. And uh, yeah, so let's start the computer and see if it works this time. <laughs> let's see, and let's see if I get the signal here. Yeah, there you go. There are the two drives. And yeah, so uh, there you got the two drives. Uh, and down here is my uh, USB stick. So I just select the USB stick and press enter. And the installer should now boot. And the network cables are unplugged from the computer because I'm going to set that up later when everything is installed. And you can basically have, have uh, how many network cards as you want. Uh, you need at least two one for the internet and one for your own network. So this is the first thing you get, the sort of a license agreement. And I'm going to move the mouse away here. So you just press enter here, accept. And also here, install PFSense, just press enter. And then you can select the key map, sort of the language of your keyboard. If you are in the United States or have a, a English keyboard, you can just press enter here. I live in Sweden though, so I'm actually going down here with the arrow keys and I'm going to select the Swedish, not Swiss, because I don't live in Switzerland, I live in Sweden, so I select Swedish and press enter. And then you can test it if you want. I just go up one step, continue with this key map. And then I select the top one here, guided root on ZFS. And most people, if you just have a single disk, just press enter here or whatever. Um, I'm going to down one step here where it says stripe zero disks. And I'm going to press enter there and select mirror. And press enter. And here you can actually select the drives. And you can see that both of the drives here and also the uh, USB stick. <clears throat> and here you just press space, the space bar. And you see a, a star is there. And I go down one step, press the space bar. So now the both of these drives are selected. And now I just press enter here. And now you see it's two disks. I also go down here where it says partition scheme and right now it says GPT BIOS and UEFI. I only use UEFI but if you use uh, like legacy stuff you can select BIOS like this, uh, MBR BIOS. Uh, but I use UEFI so I just hit enter here until it says GPT UEFI and then I go up to the top proceed with installation and now you get the warning saying that it will so delete everything on the drives and are you sure and you select yes here with our arrow keys and just press enter and now it will install everything and it's quite a small installation, so it's pretty quick. 
Of course, it depends on your drives and whatever. I have two SSDs, so it's kind of quick. And of course, it depends on your USB stick as well. Uh, this one is uh, just a regular USB 2 stick. But if you have like USB 3, it will be even faster. All right, so installation is done. So you see it's pretty quick installation. This is real time. Uh, it asks if you want to enter the uh, shell. No. And yeah, reboot. And wh when it reboots, you can actually just select or pull out the USB stick. But it needs to kind of restart first. Now plug it out. So I just took out the USB stick. And it should now boot by itself on the uh, SSDs. And I'm going to set up the interfaces as well. And as I said before, maybe um, you can have as many as you want, but you need to have at least two. And I like to have them in a specific order. So uh, yeah, you need to select which one is the internet connection and the other one, which one is uh, your sort of local network. Yeah, this is actually real time. So I'm not going to speed up anything. And as you can see, it's actually on real hardware. And I actually got two network cards from Intel. And I disabled the uh, built-in one on the motherboard the real tech one so I just used the two Intel NICs so let's see there we go and right here I'm going to start with assigning interfaces so what you do here you see it's number one so I type one and then enter and it asks if you want to have VLANs right now no I'll do that later and I select uh, auto detection here, so I just type A, press enter, and now it wants you to plug in the, your sort of internet connection to one of the network cards. And you should wait like five or 10 seconds so that you actually, the network card get a link. And yeah, the see link is up and then you press enter. Now it wants you to plug in the cable for your local network uh, or set that up at this A here as well. Do the same thing, plug in your LAN interface. Then you're gonna wait like five, 10 seconds until you get like a link. And it does, so now you press enter. And then this is, will be your setup right now and proceed, yes, enter. So let's see works as I said this is real time so 
I'm not skipping ahead or whatever. Yeah, so it takes about 10 minutes to install <laughs> and set it up. And I'm just showing you this sort of interface because right now it's actually set up and you can see that now you have your internet, the WAN is your internet and the LAN is your own network. And the WAN IP there is just a local IP address because I connected it to my own router. So you can't really hack it. <laughs> and the setup is now done. Now you need to go to a, a different computer and type in that IP address, the LAN IP, the uh, 168.1.1. And you need to set, set up the admin account and stuff like that. So yeah, but this is just the installation of PFSense. Now you're actually done. So. Uh, yeah, catch you later.